Hi, Shane here. You're watching Sam for God. And this is Mark. Check her out. So hi guys, how are you doing? A few days ago on the 2nd of September 2016, which was a Friday, I went to the Wimbledon Theatre, which is my local kind of touring theatre because it's the closest one to London and I live in London. And I went there on a spontaneous visit to go and see Ghost the Musical and this is the programme for it. Now, <laughs> I really don't know how to talk about this production and it's been quite a while since I've done a theatre review as well on this channel. I wasn't even going to make this review to be honest but in the interval after what I saw in the first half of the show I just felt like I needed to because there's so much I need to talk about this show and it's not really good stuff so yeah. So a little bit of background first about Ghost the Musical before I start talking about this current production. I first saw Ghost on its actual opening night in London back in 2011 I think it was. I went to the press night and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was an amazing musical, really good score, a great story, amazing special effects. I just really enjoyed it and after that I saw it a couple of more times in London and I, you know, I enjoyed it every single time. I don't think it's a perfect show. There are definitely some flaws in the show but overall it's a good show. It's, it's got a great score and it's, it was very enjoyable when it was in London but I hadn't seen it since 2012 and I didn't even know about this current tour production until the casting announcement came a few weeks ago that Sarah Harding from Girls Aloud is going to be playing Molly in this tour and I just remember seeing it on Facebook and stuff and I was just like oh <laughs> this I want to see just out of curiosity because you know, on paper it just doesn't sound like it's a good idea, does it? The thing is though, guys, I have absolutely nothing against stunt casting. I'm actually on the other side of what normal theatre fans normally say. Like, I really don't mind stunt casting. Most of the times where I've seen stunt casting in shows and stuff or celebrities in shows I've actually enjoyed the performances so I always like giving celebrities or people who've been stunt casted a chance before I judge them I mean to give you an example when Shrek the Musical was in London I saw three different people play the role of Fiona Amanda Holden, Kimberly Walsh and Alice Fern of these three people Alice Fern was actually the only person who'd been properly trained in musical theatre Kimberly Walsh got the part because she was in Girls Aloud and Amanda Holden got the part because she judges Britain's Got Talent and yet funnily enough Alice Fern's portrayal of Fiona in Shrek the Musical Musical was my least favourite of the three. Yes, she sang it better than the other two, but I much preferred the other two's portrayal generally. They just, I just thought they were more funny, they were more suited to the character than Alice was. So, in my experience, stunt casting can actually sometimes work and it's needed and I'm normally fine with it. However, this production... I don't even know where to start. So with this production of Ghost, it's not just Sarah Harding who has been stunt cast. And if you don't know who Sarah Harding is, let me just give you a bit of information about her because otherwise this video won't make sense to you. Sarah Harding is this girl here. Um, and she used to be in a girl group, girl band, whatever, called Girls Aloud, who were quite famous in the UK for quite a few years. And believe it or not, I actually, I'm a fan of Girls Aloud. I've been to their concerts. I, I used to love their music. I still enjoy their music. So I don't have anything against Sarah Harding just generally. Like, I really enjoyed her in Girls Aloud. She was fine. I enjoyed their music and stuff. But in this show, she really isn't good. Her voice just really doesn't work for the songs in Ghost the Musical. She doesn't have a bad voice and she's not out of tune. Like, I honestly went in there expecting the worst and it was only their second night as well. Like, they'd only done one public performance before the show that I saw of them, so, you know, maybe they'll get better. But vocally, Sarah Harding just wasn't very good, especially having seen it in London myself previously with Casey Levi and I also saw Siobhan Dylan do it and Rebecca Treherne once. Sarah's voice just, just wasn't good. It really wasn't. And again, let me just clear this up. It's not bad. It's not like she can't sing. She can sing. She can hold a tune and stuff. It's just her voice is very breathy. Like it's just like she stops after every word. It's like she can't continue. It just does. It just does not sound nice. Basically, these beautiful songs from Ghost the Musical do not sound nice on the ears at all when she sings them. And then we move on to her acting, which is pretty much like what you would see in a school production, even probably worse than that. I don't want to say she doesn't try, because she tries. Like, watching her in the show, I could tell that Sarah Harding was trying. Like, she was trying to be as good as she can. It's just that she just can't. Like, there's a limit to her abilities, I guess, when it comes to this role, and she just couldn't do it. She was she was definitely trying, so I don't want to be harsh to her, and I don't like the fact that all these people in the media and stuff on Twitter, etc., are just saying constantly bad stuff about her. It's not her fault. It's not like she said, oh, I want to do this part. Somehow she got cast, and she deserves to be happy that she's been cast, of course. It's not her fault that she's been cast in the show. You should blame the casting directors, or the producer, or whatever, not her. In any case, she's definitely trying. You can tell that she's giving it her all, but her acting is really, really, really bad. And there was one scene where 
I mean, I'm sure you've all seen Ghosts of Film. You probably know what happens in the show, but if you don't, don't listen for a few seconds. But when Sam dies in the show, obviously Sarah Harding's character, Molly, is very upset and is like crying and like, oh my God, what's happened? That was probably one of the worst acting performances I've ever seen on stage. Literally, the way Sarah did it was just embarrassing like it almost felt like I was watching a five-year-old playing like some kind of make-believe game with her friends the way she was crying it was really bad however she did have her good moments like like I said it's not terrible it's just that her acting isn't good and towards the end in act two especially towards the end of act two she she got a bit better still not amazing still not even good just better than she was at the start so acting wise you know even though she, i don't think she's done much acting before at all really so obviously she's not really got much experience or she's not really been trained or anything but maybe as the tour goes on she'll get better i mean i always believe that anyone if they have it in themselves and they try hard can act to a certain degree and maybe she will like who knows but andy moss let's talk about andy moss the guy that plays sam in the show this is what he looks like um the other lead in the show i do this because they're leads but they're both just really bad um so yeah andy moss believe it or not like everyone's saying oh my god sarah harding is terrible in ghost the musical andy moss really isn't any better now i personally had no clue who andy moss even was apparently he's been in hollyoaks the famous soap for like quite a few years and stuff but i don't watch hollyoaks or any other soap so i wouldn't have known but yeah so he would be like a tv actor and as far as I've seen in his credits, again, he's not really done any theatre shows before at all. So I would imagine this was his first proper, like, professional theatre job as well. And with Andy, like, he looked the part, right? He looked the part and his acting was <laughs> a little bit better than Sarah's. Like, at least you could tell that he's done acting before because he has, you know, he's done acting in Hollyoaks. And there were times that I actually believed his performance and I was like, He's doing a good job but voice wise oh my god andy moss bless him again there were some painful painful moments in the show when he just couldn't hit the notes or just sounded really weak and all these beautiful songs in ghosts especially when it was him and sarah harding singing together turned out to be very very underwhelming and just as though they are performed by an amateur cast it was bad it really was bad uh, they hardly had any chemistry andy moss and sarah harding but again i only saw the second show that might come along as they do more shows together but it just wasn't working and once again i don't want to sound harsh because they were both trying especially andy moss andy moss did have some good moments like i said his acting especially in scenes where it was just kind of himself or he was interacting with other characters in the show like there were some scenes where he would interact with uh, oda may and he was pretty good in those because oda may is really good so i guess he kind of bounced off of her or something i don't know but the scenes with him and sarah harding were quite painful to watch to be honest now carl is the next character i want to talk about um carl was played by an actor called sam faraday in the show and i believe sam faraday's actually been properly trained in musical theater and stuff this is him and looking at his credits and stuff has been in like jersey boys blue man group in new york um he's been in over the rainbow the uk tour he's basically done quite a lot of theater shows he's a proper actor if you like and in this production it really showed because vocally he was like above the two leads completely and again acting wise as well he was just better than sarah harding and andy moss and you could tell like as soon as he entered it was just like it was a bit almost like off balance because he was a lot better than the other two and it was just like oh this is a bit weird to watch because one of them's clearly like believable uh, this guy here as carl and the other two is just like a bit awkward and dodgy at times so yeah credit to him and sam faraday was great i don't think i'd actually ever seen him in anything before which is weird because i've seen musical theater shows a lot but he played bob godio in the uk tour of jersey boys so that's his most recent credit and yeah he was great in this i loved his voice you know he very much convinced me like i hated him a bit towards the end you know if you've seen the show if you know the story you know why but yeah he was it was really good and i feel like he deserves some credit because everyone when they talk about this current production of girls they keep going on about how bad sarah harding is and how miscast andy moss is in this show and yes maybe both of those statements are true but it doesn't take away from the fact that some of the other actors in the show especially the supporting cast were actually really good and speaking of the rest of the cast odame in this show is played by <laughs> an actress called jackie Du Bois, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. I don't know. Uh, this is her. And oh my god, she was fantastic. Literally, as soon as she stepped on that stage, it was almost like you're watching a different show because she was just so good. Singing wise, she was fantastic. Acting wise, she was great. Her comic timing was spot on, especially you know, considering it was only her second show. It was only the second show of this cast, the show and stuff. And she just had the whole audience laughing and everybody was on her side. And she, you know, it was just hard not to watch her when she was on stage. She was 
phenomenal. Considering how bad I thought this whole production was as a whole, it really made me happy to have her on stage because she was so good that it almost felt worthwhile in a way just because of her performance alone that I spent some money to go and see the show. Now I knew I recognised Jackie from something but I couldn't put my finger on what and when I read her um, credits here apparently the last thing that she was in was People, Places and Things at the National Theatre slash the Wyndham Theatre and if you've watched my vlogs back in I think it was May me and my friend Lisa went to see People, Places and Things at the Wyndham Theatre and there's a vlog of it and People, Places and Things is probably the best play I've ever seen and the cast in it was phenomenal obviously Denise who played the lead in it was incredible and she won the Olivier for Best Actress and stuff but Jackie voice was also in the cast and she was equally as good and funnily enough Denise Goff who used to be in People, Places and Things was actually in the audience sat three rows in front of me and my friend Rebecca and it was kind of fun watching Denise watch her friend Jackie in the show because she was so supportive and she was so happy to be watching Jackie just be incredible on stage I mean Jackie was genuinely fantastic as Oda May and it was just so lovely to be able to see it from like its perspective that I had like I could see how proud Denise was of Jackie on stage it was just it, it just that that touched my heart and it made me happy to be there Right, I don't want to go through the rest of the cast because this video is very long already, but uh, trust me, the whole cast, apart from the two leads, was very good. The standout was Jackie as Oda May, but the rest of the cast I don't have any complaints about either. Now, why did I not like the production as a whole? That's the thing. Everybody keeps saying, oh my god, this show's terrible, this tour's terrible because Sarah Harding's awful, blah blah blah. No, I don't feel like the problem is only Sarah Harding. I think the problem is the production as a whole. This is a Bill Kenwright production, and apparently Bill Kenwright productions are generally known to just not be as good as the original, and I went in with an open mind, like I wanted to like it because, you know, I liked it in London, it's, it, I enjoyed it, it's a good show, it's a good musical, but wow the tour production just just no it does not live up to the london production at all the sets are awful the special effects are non-existent the sound quality was bad it's just a very bad production like i understand that they probably obviously had a much smaller budget for this production but i still feel like they could have done things to improve it and make it better like in the london production one of the main things that drew people in with the show ghost was the special effects like i remember the first time i saw it on the press night of the show in uh, 2011 i was so amazed by some of the things that they do in the show like just how they use the special effects the tricks that they use basically like how sam dies or turns into a ghost. I don't want to give too much away but it was just really cool to see that and honestly like believe me when I say this none of the tricks that were used in the London production are used in this current touring production. In fact there are no special effects at all really. It's it's awful. It's honestly quite cringy to watch some of the things that they do like and this is my problem like some of the things that they did in the show could have easily been improved without even too much money like I just feel like they've been lazy both creatively and physically as well. Like it just could have maybe spent a few more weeks rehearsing or come up coming up with like better ideas to make things work. I understand it's a touring production, I understand it's a different set. But they could still have made things work a bit better than what they're currently doing. Like it was embarrassing. Some of the things were embarrassing. But I don't want to end this review on a bad note. So let me talk about things that I just generally enjoy about Ghost the Musical. So the score for Ghost the Musical I think is beautiful. The lyrics in some of the songs are a bit questionable, but generally speaking, it's a good score, you know, it touches my heart. And of course, Unchained Melody is also in the show and that's just a classic. It's one of my favorite songs of all time because Gareth Gates, who I used to absolutely crush over when I was younger, did a cover of it and it hit number one, I think, in the UK. So yeah, that's good. The story itself is is great. I, I love the story. It's a beautiful love story. It, it touches your heart. And as bad as I think this production was, towards the end of it, in Act 2, I actually felt a bit teary-eyed. Like, even though Sarah Harding's acting was really bad and Andy Moss's acting was nearly as bad, they still somehow managed to make me feel emotional towards the end. Like, not like properly, oh my god, like wow, like I used to feel when I watched the London show, but it's still kind of got me and that's a good thing it just shows how powerful the story is just on its own would i recommend this touring production absolutely not i don't even think it's going to last the whole tour like apparently it's meant to go on until the end of december uh, and that's when uh, sarah harding's contracted to as well as i believe andy moss i don't know if it's going to go until then like because the reviews have been so bad like it's not it's not even officially had its press night yet but just from like word of mouth and what people have been seeing everyone's just said terrible things and honestly i re really wanted it to not be like that like I, when i went there i was like it was only the second show, but I went in there with completely an open mind. I just wanted to be non-judgmental and just see it for what it is. And unfortunately, I felt the same as everybody else. Like, Sarah Harding 
is a lovely person I'm sure and I loved her in Girls Aloud and you know she was a great pop star but she just it just does not work for this role at all and Andy Moss even though he really tries and he did have some good moments and his acting was pretty good in some scenes generally again he just doesn't have it. He sh I don't think he's right for this part. His singing was weak. He didn't have the power at all. It was just not believable, his performance. But that is it. Like, this tour is going to other places, other venues. Uh, at the moment, it's still in Wimbledon in London. So if you want to go and see it, go and see it. I mean, if you've seen it in London and just want to grab a like, really cheap ticket, I suppose you know, it's worth it if you're really curious and stuff. And the lady playing Ode May, as I said, is fantastic. So go and see it if you're curious. But if you've never seen the show before, don't don't bother with this tour. I feel like it's just a shame because after the show, me and Rebecca, well, this lady on the tube back, she was just, she randomly started talking to us. It was like a middle-aged Scottish lady. She was standing in front of me and Rebecca on the tube. And she saw this in my hand. She was like, oh, did you guys watch Ghost as well? And we were like, yeah. And she was like a casual, like, theatre goer like me and Rebecca obviously go to the theatre a lot and stuff we've seen loads of shows but she it was her first time seeing Ghost uh, the musical she'd never even seen the film before and she was just she just gone to see the show on her own and literally as like, you know as this the first thing she said to me after she saw this in my hand was the guy playing the lead wasn't very good was he talking about Andy Moss playing Sam and that's coming from a general audience member who doesn't go to theatre as often and if she noticed that if like the first thing that came to her mind was how bad the lead actor was that's sad that just shows that you know it's not just like big theatre gigs or fans of theatre who go often who notice how bad this is even people who don't necessarily go to theatre as often recognise how bad the two leads were and I mean I guess if you've not seen a show before maybe you won't have too much of a problem with the production itself because you wouldn't know what you've been missing out on because you wouldn't have seen the London production but you probably would still find some of the things that they do to try and do the tricks very cringeworthy but that is it guys <laughs> i feel really bad doing this review like so bad because one of the main reasons i started this channel sam for god was to share my love for theater and to like tell you about productions and shows that i'm excited about and that i'm loving so that you guys watching could go and watch them as well and normally when i see like shows that i don't like much i just don't talk about them i don't make reviews about them but this one i just had to because i really feel like it's a shame for anybody to go and experience this and have this be their first experience of Ghost. Once again, I do want to say I have nothing against Sarah Harding, I have nothing against Andy Moss, they're both, I'm sure, great people in their own rights and they were both definitely trying, I need to make this clear. I'm not saying that they were on stage, like, not giving it their all, like, they were trying. You could tell that they were both trying to be as best as they could, it's just a shame that their best versions wasn't even half as good as what some musically trained theatre could do. But yeah, if you've seen the show, leave comments down below, let me know what you think about it. Try and be nice, like don't just say Sarah Harding's terrible in it, just kind of just explain your reasons and let's keep my channel a nice place still. I don't want to be a harsh person about theatre or anything, I just I try and be as honest as I can and this was my honest review of Ghost the Musical, the Bill Ken Wright production 2016. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, sorry this video was very long <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye.